Dr. Myers. No, my life is better for knowing this guy. So thank you, Dr. Myers. Um, and I wanted to thank Helen Rainey as well, and uh, Susan Short, and the board that's here for the Grand Canyon Association. Um, the association brought me here tonight. The association brings Grand Canyon history to Arizona and to the world. And so, uh, just another. presentation tonight is in two parts. I'm going to take about 25 minutes to introduce you to Multi Fomer and Fomer's boat building career and the river trips that he did. And then I'm going to segue into about a 45 minute film that he did of his 1950s river trips. If anybody in this room has met Multi Fomer, um, I'd love it if you would come by afterwards and say, yeah, I have and we need to talk because we're trying to track down a little more about people that actually know him outside of family. Um, so I, I really appreciate that. Um, otherwise, if you could, could hold your questions to the end, um, then if people like me leave, they can. Um, if you need to leave like during this, because we're boring, you can do that too. Um, but uh, otherwise, um, we'll do questions and answers at the end. So with that, let's introduce you to Multiformer. There's a zillion people I need to thank. Well, we thank Doc Myers, and we thank the Grand Canyon Association. Um, Richard Corrali with Northern Arizona University Special Collections, when I kind of exhausted his world, um, then I had to go up to Utah and look at the University of Utah Special Collections and the Utah State um, Archives up there, and when I exhausted that, Richard said, well, go to Huntington, so I'm in Huntington. And then, of course, there's the families um, of these river runners, uh, just amazing folks that um, you call, and of course, they hang up on you, and you call back, and, say Grand Canyon, and then slow down, and want to listen, and then, and then you get your foot in the door. Um, and of course, um, I certainly want to thank Kim Beeson and Colleen High, the Grand Canyon National Park Special Collections, who are really sort of anchors for this whole journey. Dave Mortensen is the instigator of this whole, it's all Dave's fault. Um, 1999, we were on a river trip way out in the west end of Grand Canyon, came around the corner and saw some backpackers. And uh, we pulled in, they came over, we started talking, we had dinner with them. And Dave that night told me this incredible story of his dad, a guy named uh, Vernon, but they called him Brick because of his brick red hair, and his river trips in the late 1950s in Grand Canyon. And he mentioned a guy named Moldy Fulmer and Fulmer's boat called the Gem. And I thought, well, that's all really interesting. And, and years went by. And at one point, I was talking to Dave, and I said, Dave, listen, I, you know, we met back in 1999. I got a question for you. Why would anybody be called moldy? Like moldy cheese, you know? I just, he said, no, you got it wrong. It's multi as short for molten, like molten lava. And I was like, aha. And he said, well, wait a minute. Now you work at Grand Canyon. Why don't you go look for Moldy's boat? Because I think it's up in the South River. My dad told me it was up there. So in 2006, I talked to Colleen Hyde and Kim Beeson. And they said, yeah, we got the boat, but you don't want to see it. I said, why don't I want to see it? And they said, well, you'll see when you see it why you don't want to see it. It's in the cold garage. And I'm like, oh, the cold garage, that's cool. That's got good history. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Colleen Hyde there um, showing me what she knew I didn't want to see. Um, the trouble was I fell in love with this wreck of a boat. And, and what I, so I started doing some research to figure out what this was because I'd seen some photographs and the photographs didn't match the boat. It was the weirdest thing. And so what I learned is this boat has known hardship for a long time. It sank in Lake Mead, a place called God's Pocket, 1958. This is a Bill Belknap photograph. A guy named Ted Whitmore there. Um, they found the boat, 1964. So it's six years underwater in Lake Mead. We went back to this same spot. And the sediment now is right over where this boat would have been. So if they hadn't found it, it would have been covered suddenly. They pulled this, went to pull this boat out into Boulder City, sat there in the garage for 10 years or more, then went over to the cold garage, sat there for a long time. So I started researching more and more. I really got intrigued. What's the history of this? We have to go back, way back in time. Francis Fulmer met Emma Greenwood, and they got married. Now, Francis was studying creamery at the time uh, under a guy named Stephen Moulton Babcock, the guy on the left, a laughing scientist, the father of modern nutrition. Uh, the Babcock milk fat test is something some of you may know about if you grew up on a farm. 
2%, half and half, that whole concept of milk fat. That was Stephen Moulton Babcock. The, the son, uh, sorry, the, the student was so impressed with the professor that he named his third born Stephen Moulton Babcock Fulmer. Wow, how cool is that? And, and young Steve had the name of Steve for about three hours until elder sister Thelma came home from school to find a new baby brother in the tribe. Thelma had a problem. There was a kid in school named Steve that she hated, and no baby brother of hers was going to be called Steve. He would be called Multi or Molten. So the boy named Sue, uh, anybody in Muncie, Indiana, for 50 years knew this guy as Multi. If you said, where's Steve Fulmer? They go, never heard of him. So Fulmer was a pretty interesting guy. He was a basketball star in a land full of basketball players. He was too short for the high school team. So he ran off to the YMCA team and played for the Midgets and took them to the national championship. <laughs> well, Paul State made good use of him, and he's in their Hall of Fame. Uh, just amazing basketball prowess. Married his uh, college sweetheart, Janice Ziering, and you would have never, never heard about this guy and his life in Muncie, Indiana, if it wasn't for this little disaster of dad divorcing mom about 1905 and dad split for the California coast. What that meant through the uh, teens and into the 20s and 30s is that the kids would go visit dad in California and that introduced Multi to the American Southwest. And as he started going out to see dad with his wife in this rickety old car, he ended up going out on horseback to Rainbow Bridge in 1841 where he heard about some river runners. This guy named Norm Nevels. So they started exchanging correspondence, and Nevels invited Fulmer on a river trip from Mexican Hat down to Lee's Ferry. And so Fulmer came out with his wife Janice, and Nevels was there with a guy named Preston Walker. And these are the boats that they had. This is a picture from their trip here. This little canvas boat and a San Juan punt. They got to Lee's Ferry on 90,000 cubic feet a second. And they had an incredible time. It was a lot of fun. So Fulmer. You know, when you get bitten by the river, you're in trouble. Fulmer went right back to Muncie, Indiana, with this concept in mind of a floating cattle trough. It's, it's, it's a San Juan hunt, right? Okay, I mean, it looks like a floating cattle trough. Okay, great. It works at 90,000 cubic feet a second. What's wrong with this boat? Nothing. Hey, they had a great time. So Fulmer started building boats. It's his first boat, 1942, called the Tub. Muncie. That's a neighbor kid in the back, he almost drowned. <laughs> but Fulmer was, you know, he was working for the Muncie Y. He knew how to make people learn how to swim, so he was good about saving. He was a great swimmer. And uh, so that was his first boat, the tub. But you know, it, was, it wasn't really stable, so he wanted to build another boat. So in 1943, he built the Domino. Now, now Fulmer works for the Muncie Y. They got his busted up ping pong tables, so he built this out of used ping pong tables. Um, about nine foot long, lucky number seven. And then, of course, in World War II. Well, Fulmer was 39 when he um, was swept into the Army. In 1945, something very fascinating happened. Fulmer was stationed in Campadere, Oregon. And I'm thinking it was the company commander, but I'm not sure yet. We've got to nail that down precisely. The company commander said, you need to go see a guy here in Oregon that builds boats. His name is Woody Hinman. And Fulmer said, oh, okay. So it took one Sunday, hitched got a bus ride, um, found uh, Hinman's address there in Springfield, walked up to the house, and there's this guy sleeping on the front porch. Wakes him up. It's Woody. Woody says, where are you? What do you want? He says, well, I guess I build boats on the river. And uh, somebody sent me over here to look at your boats. This is a boat that Hinman was making in mid-40s. This is one of the Hinman design boats. Hinman also had one of these in his shop that was decked over that he used for the 1945 uh, River Parade. Um, and so Fulmer saw this, and he went, oh, isn't that interesting? Look at this sweep. Look at this, what's called a rocker, this arc in the bottom of the boat from front to back. It's like a rocking chair. It has a lot of arc in it front to back. Well, it was reminiscent of his first boat called the tub. So Fulmer got out of the war in 1945, 1946, back to the garage. Overwintered 46 47, Fulmer built his third boat called the Moja, named for himself and his wife, Maltine Janice. 
It's 15 feet long. It looks an awful lot like a decked Woody Hinman Mackenzie River drift boat, Mackenzie River Dory. Quarter inch plywood, 15 inch rocker, four feet wide. So it's, you know, it's an orangutan hub kind of width there. Not, you know, that way. But Fulmer really wanted to run Grand Canyon. So in 1948, he paid a thousand bucks to go down the river with Nornells. They were still in, in, in contact, exchanging mail back and forth. And on this key trip, Fulmer met a guy named Doc Marston. And there's Marston on the right. And for 30 years afterwards,